Kenya ni inchi ambayo imekuwa targeted sana kwa maneno ya kuchukua data ya wananchi. Na tume, nimekuwa, tumekuwa last year na kesi ya WorldCoin. Wamekuja wameanza kuchukua eh, su, eh, picha za macho za watu, eh, irises, na tulipeleka motion bunge, tukapata hawa watu walikuwa na operate without licenses. Starlink, a global company, lakini haija establish office yuku Kenya. Kwa hivyo, hata wa Kenya wote wa join, unless unapewa hiyo internet, Hakuna mtu Kenya hata mmoja atapata nafasi ya kazi. Hakuna ushuru ile Kenya itapata. Na at the end of the day, hivyo ndivyo tutafanya zote tukue slaves in future ya maneno ya biashara katika nchi yetu. Hello and welcome to SPM Buzz. We have Saudi TV and Spotlight. TV, we are right here with Manyata Member of Parliament, Honorable Gitonga Mukunji. And of course, yesterday he made some comments concerning Starlink, Safari comment. Of course, they were received uh, differently by Kenyans. We are here with him to get the insight of what he said. Mwishimu wa karibu sana. Asante sana. Kwa salama. Mini kupu wa kapsa. Wa Kenya, wameanza kukusalimia vipi? No, no, no. Actually, eh... Wagenya wako sawa na hawajanisalimia. Lakini niliongea juzi nikaongea maneno ya ya Starlink ambayo ni eh, an entry katika upande ya internet provision eh, in the country eh, ISP. Na nilikuwa nasema ya kwamba eh, internet na zile vitu zingine zenye zina zinaingia katika nchini ni vizuri while tuna allow eh, kampuni zingine kuingia kutoka nje lakini lazima pia tuhakikishe tumeweza kuweka sheria ambapo wa Kenya wapotezi nafasi za kazi na wa Kenya pia hawauzi E, vitu zao for free and e, ile kitu ningetaka kuambia wa Kenya ya kwamba mimi ni mmoja wa wale i support 100% competition na maneno ya monopolies should not be allowed na pia we need cheap internet na tunahitaji pia fast internet kwa sababu e, as goes as days goes by we depend a lot na maneno ya 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 mitandaoni lakini mimi argument yangu is very simple ya kwamba kitu ya kwanza Kenya ni inchi ambayo imekuwa targeted sana kwa maneno ya kuchukua data ya wananchi na tume nimekuwa tumekuwa last year na kesi ya WorldCoin wamekuja wameanza kuchukua eh, su, eh, picha za macho za watu eh, irises na tulipeleka motion bunge tukapata hawa watu walikuwa na operate without licenses na hawakuwa na kampuni huku Kenya kwa hivyo hata wako wameajili mtu hata mmoja wameajileta wamekuja wameanza kuoperate Starlink ni kampuni ambayo ina offer internet eh, satellite based internet na ni kampuni ambayo inaleta speed mzuri sana za internet so is a very lucrative eh, argument that in a offer better solution kuliko safaricom mm -hmm. ama zile eh, isp zingine internet service providers wengine katika nchi yetu ya Kenya lakini kitu ya kwanza mimi najiuliza starlink a global company lakini haija establish office yuku Kenya kwa hivyo hata wa Kenya wote wa join unless unapewa hiyo internet hakuna mtu Kenya hata mmoja a, atapata nafasi ya kazi hakuna ushuru ile Kenya itapata na at the end of the day hivyo ndivyo tutafanya zote tukue slaves in future ya maneno ya biashara katika nchi yetu ukifanya tu a quick search uangalie zile nchi ambazo zinafanya vizuri sahi katika dunia ni nchi ambazo zimeweza ku protect their own companies na kutafuta ile kitu naita local solutions 
local solutions ama una attract you attract international companies kuleta presence zao katika nchi ile isizi tunaishi kama Kenya na hiyo ndiyo nasema ya kwamba local capacity is very key tumeanguka sana as government we have failed kutengeneza local capacity na kuhakikisha we protect our own local companies zile zinaweza pair ma jobs hata kwa ma youth wetu and i'll give an example uber 75% ya 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 pesa za taxis in kenya hata zinalipwa na visa zinaenda maju because uber is an international company ukienda kwa taxi hata they don't rank anywhere safaricom iko na local presence inalipa ushuru actually is the is the biggest uh, taxpayer uh, corporate taxpayer in kenya ukienda kwa makampuni zingine kama hizi uh, uh, za internet i mean not za internet but za za za, za taxis uh, taxis local companies za taxis zina struggle because uber is able to operate without uh, zero expenses lakini uki establish huku unakuwa ma barabara we build many many roads kenya is one of those countries that has invested a lot on roads lakini tunatumia wa china tukitumia wa china wanaleta uh, wa chinese wana employ vijana kidogo wa, wa mkono lakini materials equipment kila kitu wanaleta kutoka nje without building local capacity yetu so is a question na ni debate nimeanzisha i have started a debate ya kujiuliza miaka kumi. ile wakati kila kitu tutakuwa tunatoa nje including internet watoto wetu na watoto wetu watatoa kazi wapi that's the biggest question na ile kitu kingine nataka kutaadharisha wa Kenya the new gold saa hizi kwa dunia ni kitu inaitwa data every company ndio maana worldcon inataka kuja ndio maana sterling inataka kuja because data is the new gold na ndio maana we have to be very keen kuhakikisha ya kwamba while tuna support uh, cheap internet while tuna support good internet while tuna support uh, kila mtu afikiwe na internet at what cost na mimi ningesema pia safaricom should pull up its socks hiyo maneno ya satellite kenyan uh, uh, corporates that are dealing with matters ICT should go beyond reasoning ile ya local so that they are also not run down by the new technology changes that are coming we need to protect the 5000 jobs that have been given by safaricom and almost a million jobs indirectly that safaricom is able to to maintain lakini we also have to be keen we also need to have a conversation ya maneno ya even future of our 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 our, 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 our textile industry kwa sababu if we don't build local capacity if we don't consume what we produce if covid comes again mipaka yote ifungwe vile ilifungwa kenya will become even beyond a third world country yes maybe mheshimiwa just to go back to the statement that you made concerning yes. sterling and uh, safaricom uh, in your statement you mentioned that once you go back to parliament you're going to make sure that um, members of parliament by all means protect safaricom against maybe such competitors maybe because of the issue that other companies are not um, for lack of a better word giving back to the Kenyan community. Yes. Um the question is maybe how are you guys going to go about this? You see, I mimi ndio nileta debate ya uh, Worldcoin. Yeah. Na nileta hiyo debate kwa sababu is always good as a country to debate. If anybody tells you not to say something, just say it. Mm -hmm. Because when you say it and somebody has a different opinion, maybe you listen and hear whether somebody has a better idea than you. The point is National Assembly is where we are supposed to have these debates. So the debate I'm looking at is a debate ya kufanya balancing between what we are getting from multinationals vis-a-vis -vis what this country needs right now.
which is actually jobs for our young people. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say that uh, multinationals are not the best friends for Kenya. If you think about it, many of them want it as cheap as it can be gotten. Na ukiangalia hata wale watu wanafanya hii maneno ya mitandao, eh, maneno ya, 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 ya online jobs. They are paid very cheaply. Again, Stephen, what is uh, happening in the mother countries where those, ca those companies come from? So, this conversation is a conversation of the future. Kwa sababu, while we are building our own capacity, lazima tujiulize whether this country will be in slavery in a number of years. Katase of what we have allowed to come in. I'm against international companies taking over our country completely. Whether it is a it comes at, a, at what advantage? When a company does not have presence in Kenya, and I mean presence where even taxation is done here, that company should be looked at keenly before we allow it. So in case maybe, for example, I'll give an, insta, an example of Starlink. If they, are, uh, they register as a company here in Kenya and they offer employment to Kenyans, then you will be okay with that. I, I am supporting them 100%. But if it is a matter of you paying your internet through visa, then taxes is paid in the US, and no local employment that comes in, then we will just need to even uh, put more resources to Safaricom for it to even uh, get those satellite uh, engagement. Because uh, let's think about it. Safaricom... Uh, uh, through even that fiber optic alone has been able to have companies in numbers going all around the country laying down the cables there are technicians that uh, check uh, on the connections thereof so it's a whole different uh, uh, network that we can mess if we just allow uh, our internet provider to be uh, Elon Musk now Elon Musk doesn't even has never come to Kenya he has never visited Kenya even once. So he's not a man we can say he has best interests of Kenya at heart. There's something you mentioned, and uh, it's probably one thing that many Kenyans do not know, the issue of data protection. Yes. And how are you going to go about that specifically? Because yes. as it stands right now, it's, it's like the most expensive thing you can have, someone's data. Maybe how do you go about that on specifically? Oh, l let me say that uh, data, as I have said, is a new gold in the world. And many companies, including uh, companies such as WorldCoin, companies uh, such as uh, OpenAI, companies such as Meta, uh, X, all those companies, they offer you that social interaction. But what you are giving in return is your data for advertisement cases, to sell into government and to sell even internationally uh, to various uh, issues. If, if today uh, we can even quantify, many of these companies don't make their money through anything. They make their money through selling that data. Mm -hmm. So we need to rethink our data protection. We need to affirm and ensure that we protect Kenyans. One day uh, Elon Musk might decide to switch off all his uh, equipment. And Kenya will be in darkness. So <laughs> we need to think about this. And he's a pure capitalist. He's not a philanthropist. He's a pure capitalist. Uyu ni mutu anataka kutengeneza mabilioni zake. Si ati anasema, oh, wa Kenya na wapenda zana. Habana, ni mutu anataka kutengeneza mabilioni zake. Yes. And while he is making those billions, as Kenya, let us get advantage of even getting a few of us employed, a few young people employed, and a few... Uh, opportunities that would come uh, within while we are giving whatever we want to give. Uh -huh. Yes. When you say that, a lot of Kenyans complain because uh, they are, the whole debate online was the fact that this one is more cheaper than the other one. And um, right now, as you speak, I know there's someone watching and they're asking probably, then how, why can't we make it cheaper? Um, from uh, maybe, for example, why can't we make it cheaper to get internet from Safaricom? No, I agree, and I am saying, and I won't repeat it. Mm. Safaricom is not the best. It's not the best. Mm. 
it has gotten as where we have gotten but it needs to up its game for the future so we need cheaper internet we need faster internet but i want to tell kenyans that there is nothing like free lunch they might think they is get, they are getting free internet but whatever they are giving in return is more costly and is actually beyond uh, valuable in terms of what they are giving mm -hmm. data is key and that is what i'm telling you mm -hmm. yes talking about maybe foreign companies operating in kenya um you've mentioned it's probably not uh, for the better of kenyans however we have seen companies who are even working with uh, maybe some of the government uh, uh owned projects and uh we haven't had maybe members of parliament talk about that. Well, l let me say um, it has been close to 10 years since we did the uh, Thika Road mm -hmm. and all these projects. We have allowed foreign companies to come in and uh, take a lot of resources from us. And I will say for a fact why we are even struggling with debt is because we bring in foreign companies they take our resources, we pay them through our taxes, but at the end of the day, we are left with the infrastructure without capacity building. Today, I am one of the biggest champion of local contractors getting more business. But if you think about it, there is no companies in Kenya that are able to do projects in the level of what Chinese are doing. What has China done? China has built local capacity. It has allowed uh, its, its companies to get cheap credit from even government uh, guarantees. Kenya, we bring in these companies, they don't do what we call technology transfer. They don't do even what we call uh, knowledge transfer. So they want to come back and back and back because in their countries, they are here to make their money and leave Kenya. So it is actually upon uh, us, even as legislators and government. Because if we continue like this, in another 20 years, we will have a country that is in debt, but it is not even able to, to carry out uh, simple matters such as even better road construction, which is the case right now. And I want to call upon the institutions that actually uh, are actually responsible of this from road construction to technology to even trade we need to rethink our model so that we are able to see the future even if it's not right now in 10 years we should not continue depending on foreign companies one of the things that we should have learned from covid is that many many countries protected their boundaries without thinking we depend on them. It was very hard to ship from China. What if we depend from China fully? We become a, a mess. We need to actually protect and build local capacity. We need to build local capacity so that we are able to see the future for our kids. Yes. The other day we had uh, demonstrations at the airport and I know um, maybe people want to hear from you about that demonstrations for, uh, for at the airport for the workers uh well i i want to say i am against any international companies coming to run things in kenya that are actually uh, beyond even 30 years we need to have kenyans and government rethinking how it is approaching matters about giving our resources giving opportunity to low, uh, foreign companies to come here and invest. Any company that is coming here should come in and be very clear in terms of how Kenya is going to benefit. I'm totally against any institutions and companies that are coming in in Kenya and they, they, are, they look like it is not very clear on their, what their agenda is. I did not personally see any advertisement on the papers or even in the international media on that on issues to do with our airport being uh, be, uh, being uh, requiring some sort of uh, financial request 
or upgrade. So those are things that we need to, to check. And when we get to the National Assembly, we are going to actually uh, request for those things. So at this point, we can say probably, to some extent, also the government is failing Kenyans in such. Uh, I, I, I don't speak on behalf of government. I am a member of parliament of Manyata constituency, and I'm the chairman, Kenya Young Members of Parliament. So I don't want to cast any aspersions. All I want to say is my role as a legislator, which is oversight, requires me to check on all these things. Yes. Hi, uh, so we will still be here waiting uh, to see maybe, especially from you, because this is a whole debate. Yes. And uh, I don't know, just to um, put it out there, make it clear, when are you planning maybe to have this tabled uh, on the floor of parliament? No, we are right now on recess. We are opening uh, the National Assembly uh, on 17th. Mm -hmm. And it will be among the first agendas that uh, get to the National Assembly. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Mheshimiwa. Yes, Tunangoja. Pomni <laughs> kujituma. Pomni kujituma. All right. Uh -huh. All right, guys. You've heard it yourself from Mheshimiwa. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, have yourself a good, good time.